Page 16, Chapter The Law of the Mind, the book is 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. And that was a citation, something we don't see happening too often these days. And thanks to my viewer Kaiser Chief 500, we're diving right into this important topic. Some people argue that in the age of advanced LLMs, discerning the truth has become impossible. What if I told you that reality could be the complete opposite? In this video, you'll get a teaser of the very first steps in this direction. However, the small steps inspired an idea that I tagged Citations Monster. But we'll talk about that later on. First, I'll show you a vanilla way of doing references or citations suggested by OpenAI. And then, of course, we'll, we'll go through methods suggested by Langchain. When doing research for citations, I started with the OpenAI documentation. The strategy is called Provide Reference Text. To be honest, going ahead, it didn't really work, but nevertheless, I will show you what it is so you know if it could be helpful for any of your projects. Here is a prompt example, which consists of, of two messages, one system message, one user message. Here's a link to Playground. If you haven't played with a Playground, <laughs> I encourage you to do so. It has two panes. One is a system message, so it's a context that is imply, applied to the entire conversation. And here you can create two types of messages, user message or assistant message. Questions you give to the LLM are the user messages, and then responses you get back are assistant messages. So you'll see how it works in a second. Now I'll copy over this system message as well as the user message. Instead of multiple articles, I'll use a story that GPT generated for me just five minutes ago. I will enclose it in triple quotes, just because from experience I know it's good to, uh, to do this. And here, instead of saying that we provide articles delimited by triple quotes, we would just say that the user provided the information enclosed. You always want to be specific in triple quotes. So our story is about dogs that went on a war against cats. So our question will be who won. So that is the user message we submit and we get the assistant message in return. So the dogs won and successfully overthrew the cat kingdom. As you can see, there is no citation happening here. It just uses the reference data. So I quickly moved on from this vanilla documentation to, of course, Langchain. First thing that Longchain offers to the citations is this create citation fuzzy match chain. I must admit results look much better than that of vanilla OpenAI, but judge for yourself. Here we're importing the modules. Here is a helper function that will do some highlighting. I'll explain that in a bit. Here's the same question. So who won? And this is our story about dogs and cats. Now the same old story, we pick an LM model, we create a long chain chain. Here I explicitly set debug to false because later on we'll set it to true and you see what happens. We get the result and we pass the result through this highlighting function. And in the end of the day, if we run all of this, we'll get our result. So the statement is that the dog successfully overthrow the cat kingdom and it does the citing and it highlights exactly the, the text that contributed to this statement. That's much better already, but of course we'll dig deeper, understand what happens under the hood before I show you the very final version, which I kind of liked. So here's this magic. This magic is very special. This magic will help us debug the web requests that are sent by our application. And the reason for that is that although we set the long chain debug to true, it still really tries hard, in my impression, maybe I'm wrong, do let me know if I'm wrong. It really tries hard to hide all the interactions that are happening with the long chain and LM. It's very kind of funny. It's open source framework, but it tries to hide, hide things from you. Uh, we did the exactly same thing as we did here, but we just enabled the, the web logging and enabled long chain debug. Let, let's see what happens. So a lot of output here. This red output is the web server output and it shows you 
the requests that the web requests that Langchain sent to open AI API, and then followed by this debug log that is coming from Langchain. Of course, I parsed it aloud for you so we could go over it in a human readable format. What happens first is that Langchain sends a bunch of messages to OpenAI. The system message where we tell OpenAI that you're a world-class algorithm, so praising the algorithm, I'm not sure if that is necessary. And then the user message answer question using the following context. Then we provide the context and the context is our story. And then our question as another user message, who won? And then we also provide some tips. But what Langchain doesn't tell you in its debug look is that it also passes a description of a function that, that is defined on the Langchain side. And that function takes two inputs, a question and then the answer. And the answer is kind of like a complex structure where when one part of that structure is the fact, that was extracted from the text and the second part it's called fact with evidence and the second part is the evidence that backups the fact and that function is built it's part of the here it's part of the langchain module so langchain passes that to openai and then openai says okay call your function question answer with this input so the question is still the same Here's the fact that OpenAI extracted from the context. So the fact is the dog successfully overthrew the cat kingdom. And here is the fact, uh, sorry, and here is the reference or citation that backs it up. And in the end of the day, this helper function finds uh, the citation in, in the original text and highlights it. That's all there is to it. Now to sum it up once again and make it crystal clear in your head, this is what's happened. User provides a question with some reference text to Langchain. Langchain takes those two, adds on top its own function that it passes on to OpenAI and tells OpenAI to, to do some work and that is to find facts and to find evidence that back up the facts and take those facts and evidences and pass them on to the Langchain function. OpenAI does that. OpenAI finds facts and evidences or citations that back those facts up, returns it to Langchain as the function arguments. Langchain calls that function with those arguments, which helps it to generate this user-friendly text output, then highlights it, and we have our answer with citations, which once again looks like this. So we have the, this is our fact. And this is our evidence and in the background and this evidence was found by OpenAI. But what Langchain did, it found this evidence in the body of text and highlighted it. Um, that's it for the fuzzy matching or fuzzy match chain. Now, a second way suggested by Langchain is so-called side multiple sources. Here all this bulk inverting of uh, Langchain modules. Now, the first source for us is the Chinook Postgres database. If you watched uh, the previous videos, it looks like this, and it describes a store with customers, with employees, with tracks, with artists, stuff like that. So that's one source. And another source, going back to the Kaiser Chiefs 500 question, in this case, is going to be a vector store. We could have read it from the PDF file, but here we're just deciding to simply pass it on as text, which of course will be vectorized, embedded, and then retrieved to, to match the context of the question. So those are the two sources. Now, Langchain suggests to use this prompt template. It basically says, okay, use the information below from these two sources to answer the question. And then it lists the sources, source one and source two. And then we pass it on this prompt template template as a system message. You remember before in the playground, you can always specify this, the context, the system message. And then the, the question comes from a human. Now what's happening here, <laughs> all of those pipes and Lambda functions, 
First, we're basically running two chains in parallel. One is the query chain and the other chain that tries to, so basically this chain tries to answer our question using the database. And this chain is trying to answer the same question using the, the document we provided. In this case, just this body of text. Now we're talking about employees because our database has employees in it. And if I'm not mistaken, there are eight employees in total. So here I'm trying to give like a counter argument saying that, well, it's constantly varying, but like the median is around 12. We run all of that. And then, yeah, my favorite argument, long chain debug, set it to false. And here's our question, how many employees are there? And again, because LMs and long chain, they're not deterministic, Depending on the run, I get different results. Let, let's see what comes out this time around. And here below, I parsed out the logic for you, of course, but uh, let's not rush. Okay, let's see. Based on the information provided, there are eight employees. So what it did, it, it picked the, the database as the source, ran the query and provided this, this answer. In the past, it did many different things. I'll run it once again while I'm explaining. Sometimes it references the source. You see, this time it picked up uh, a different source. Based on the information provided, the number of employees is currently changing, but the median is 12 employees. However, the exact number of employees is not specified in the given sources. Uh, now it picked the second source, but again, it doesn't cite it um, out of the box. So we here relying kind of on chat GPT to cite it without our help, but it doesn't do so. Again, picked up the second source. I did have runs where it would specify according to source one, it is such and such number. You see now it's different, 12, but kind of different. Uh, so that's what you get following instructions from Langchain. Again, just to recap how this works, very similar to this scenario. It, it basically runs two chains in parallel. One chain is the Postgres chain and you can see a uh, really detailed explanation of that in my previous videos, but basically says that it's a Postgres expert and sends the DDLs of the tables and then some examples of rows. And then LLM says, well, you need to run this query and then Langchain runs that query and gets this result eight. And then, then this, and then it does this retrieval from our vector store of this data locally and then combines two results together. And remember, this is the system query, sends both, both results to OpenAI and says, okay, you have two sources and here's the question, All right? And sometimes OpenAI does say where it took the data from, sometimes it doesn't. But with this very basic instruction, um, yeah, you get this behavior, which is not very consistent. I doubt anyone is watching at this point, but let me get back to the citations monster. The other day I was reading The Economist and the article about AI, open AI, LMs and all of that. And it rightly stated that the next step in large language models is that the companies will start establishing direct connections with the sources of information. For example, news agencies or websites or whatnot. So something that is always up to date that will allow models to always stay up to date. And I know many companies already do that. So Bloomberg, for example, right? Uh, but I decided to do that for myself. So I'll create a monster that knows everything about data engineering, data architecture. Uh, I will hook it up to live data sources. I will also feed some uh, manually, some books to it. And out of it, I will create a LinkedIn bot that will post one message per day, always citing the source. <laughs> I'll call it the opposite. So everyone's just like making stuff up and this bot will be always citing the source. Yeah, let's see how it goes. If you watch this piece, do let me know and do let me know your thoughts about citations monster take care